but go ahead and change the color animals to like blue, like okay. this one, right. which is illegal. All lights in Trinidad and Tobago are supposed to be on color. Okay. Right. So I mean, shop is clear. It's supposed to be clear. Right. Once it gives off a color ray, mm -hmm. it's unauthorized. Okay. And the penalty for that is seven hundred and fifty dollars. Okay. For a ticket. For a ticket. Yeah. Okay. Not per bulb. For a ticket to for the a unauthorized. For a ticket for the unauthorized. What else about these lights that you're noticing that people? Well, this is what is called a balis. Uh huh. H I D ballast. Right. This is like an amplifier for the light. Okay. The guys go out there and buy these and attach it to the light. Okay. And which will increase the amount of density that will come out. Right. In the rays. So it makes it Probably brighter. Like make it brighter. And these don't normally come with the vehicle? No, they don't normally come with vehicles. Okay. This is an accessory. This is also another kind that they use. Kind of Not a kind of ballast. Yeah. And these things are legal? Not legal at all in this country. Okay. So you have to have a permit or a license to sell these things? Well, that is something for the customs to do with. Oh, that is for customs. Yeah. Okay. But you're saying they're but, illegal yeah, and if you're caught with them. Once you put them on your vehicle, we will charge you for having unauthorized lights. Okay, but what leads you to know that a man have on one of these? Except, I mean, well, when we stop the vehicle on the road, we, give, we do a, what is called a routine inspection check. Right. And so, what do you look for in that check? Well, in checking, we might ask you to open your bonnet, right? Right. And when you open your bonnet, we look inside and we make certain observations. And most times, we see these up here connected to the lights. Okay. So we know that. Right. When we see these connected to the lights, we know that. Uh, we actually turn it on and make the observations. Oh, okay. And what what are these now? These are additional lights that they put on on their vehicle. And it has several bulbs in it. This is also unauthorized. Okay. And carries a penalty of seven hundred and fifty dollars. Also. This is the same type or yeah, this different? This is another type. Same HID. Yeah. Well, same. This is a fog light, right? And they could connect this. Could be connected to all these lights here. But what's the real risk of having these souped up extra bright lights on the roadway? The extra bright lights on the roadway cause harm to the oncoming driver. Mm -hmm. Because when you get an extra bright light coming facing you, most of you can't see right. where you're going. You might have to stop. Okay. Because if you don't stop, you could run head on into the other car. Right. So it's dangerous to the person that is doing it yes. and to the person coming from the other direction. Okay. And um, what? Oh, this is just another, another type, type of light? There are several types. So what's the infringement with this now? What's this okay. gadget here? This, yeah. this gadget here is what we call the trumpet. Well, this is a motor. For a horn, right? Right. And this is supposed to carry, carry four outlets here. Mm -hmm. You'll have four of these and connect it. And when right. you do it, you'll give a repeating song. Okay. You know? That is like police siren and then. You could you give a different song, you know, like instead of one blast pop, you might give pop, 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 pop. You oh, know, sometimes okay. I can't pass here, just hear it blowing yeah, continuously yeah. and this kind of thing, right? Okay. That is illegal. You know, it should have to be able we well, whole must make one blast. Well, okay, so no fanciness. No fanciness. Once you have okay. that, it becomes unauthorized. Okay, so this is the horn. These yeah. are all lights. Yeah. Any other things that you see that put people at risk on the highway or may be illegal that you're observing? Yes, uh, several other things. You know. mm -hmm. Tits. Tits. I want to touch a little bit on tits. Yeah. Especially, a lot of people come with the idea that they love for tits is 20 percent right the law for tint is not 20 percent it have no percentage the law say that they must not treat for tint your glasses your windows right. or windshields to a 
see the vision from outside to inside. You does not see anything about 20%. Okay. So once you can see clearly. So what's your test? You know, our test is we do, we, do, we do have a machine. Right. When we look at your car, we give a check. Yeah. Right? And once you can see, that's it. Once the officer check your glass and uh -huh. gas, you'll have to do with it. Okay. And that stands up as being unlawful. Once yeah, you as the officer say that it's unclear. Until such time they have to, to check it here. Yeah. Oh, okay. Some people go away with it. A lot of people say that they could put on cold steel. Uh -huh. Tint. Uh, I don't know if you hear the term. No. Cold steel. A lot of people go out and say that they could use cold steel. Because when they stand up by a cold steel tint, tint right. it, um, window, window, you might see inside. But when the sun hits it, you it turns want. into a mirror and ah. gives off a reflection. Okay. So no reflective tint is allowed. Okay, and what's the penalty for the that? The penalty for a tint is one thousand two thousand. Uh, penalty for tint is two thousand mm, dollars. On that's a section twenty three one D. Right. Okay. Two thousand dollars is charged for having tint on your vehicle. So if I refuse to remove my tint, you stop me on the road and you say, Hey, you need to remove this tint and I refuse. What this, what happens then? We will bring it to the office here. Right. And the Motor vehicle to traffic regulation 231 d yeah. gives the transport commission of the licensing authority the commission to cancel the registration of that vehicle. Any vehicle that is so ah, tinted. Right. From security division from outside to inside. Okay. And have you had cause to do that in Tobago here? Well we have cause to bring them inside here and then when they realize when we read the law to them, right. they normally comply. Okay, so you say it is largely because people are not aware that these are the laws and the regulations that guide, or what's the issue here? Yeah, we have a kind of follow fashion thing. <laughs> because yeah. we have a lot of problems with people tinting the whole front glass from top to bottom. Right. And that is a no no. No vehicle in China today who is supposed to be tinted the front windshield from the top to the bottom. bottom. Right, okay. I see you have some other things on the display here. Yes. What are the challenges we have with number plates? Well, we have a lot of challenges with number plates, as, mm -hmm. as you can see. These are some, some of the number plates that have been taken off of vehicles. Right. Because they're not conforming to the 4850. Right. Number plates are supposed to have... So, like this one? What? This is a digital number plate, right? Mm -hmm. The letters are supposed to be of one size, like this. Okay, like this. Yeah, this is a good plate. This is a good plate yeah, here. Yeah. Okay. All so these fancy ones here is a no no. Alright, so you're saying it should be consistent. Consistent like that. Yeah. So it doesn't matter the color. It like should be this white one, or black. It's the same color. It should be white or black, but it can't be fancy. It can't be fancy. Okay. Is there a particular reason for that? Well, the, law said, the law said that it's supposed to be about plain like that. Plain like that, that's a special, specific size. Okay, so you mean if I'm a woman and I like a little fancy plate, I can't just fancy up no, my style no, a little bit, little. even if it is. So that no. is against the law. That is against the law. Okay. Are there any other particular issues that put people at risk on the roadways that you want to mention? Well, we have to look at um, like tires. And like, yeah. as you can see, we also. Yeah. Mechanical parts. Here. Bricks right. is an important thing on a vehicle. Yeah. Right? This is a brick shoe that came off of a vehicle. Mm -hmm. You may notice that it wear long. Yeah. And if you have this on your vehicle, it will not, the bricks will not hold properly when you Right. Because it is worn long. Okay. So the missing PC and all that. Yeah. So when you mash the bricks, it will not hold. So you check for that too? Yeah, when well, we ask you to try your bricks and so on. Mm -hmm. And when you pull your bricks, if it is like this and I ask you to try your foot bricks, the bricks will not hold properly. When you mash your bricks, the wheel will still be spinning. Spinning, right. Yeah. Okay. And add it to that, it will make noise. It will make a noise when you're driving your head, making a noise. Right. This one is a dispatch, but this is completely worn. Mm -hmm. Because it's supposed to have and the pad appears still. Right. So you realize it's all gone. Okay. And this is some of the conditions that people drive their car on. The, on the road. Yeah. 
And so is there still in effect, now I remember there used to be an effect where you have to have your vehicles and private vehicles to inspect it. Is that still in effect? Yeah, that is still in effect. And what's the inspection period? All right. A new motor vehicle from the Massey or George Motors will have to be inspected after five years. Right. Right, and a sticker will be placed on it. Okay. And like a foreign used vehicle? A foreign used vehicle from the date of registration in Japan up to five years. After that, it has to have an inspection. Inspection. So every done. two years. Pickers okay. every two years. Mm -hmm. Taxis, rental vehicles, every year. Okay. So, is it possible we can know? I know you're famous for being seen on the roadway. When you are doing your checks, you stop a vehicle. What authority do you really have as a license officer to enforce the regulations with regard to these? But well, once we stop you and we check your vehicle and we see these offenses or defects on your vehicle, we could give you a notice to bring your vehicle for inspection. Okay. What with? Right. According to the detail of the inspection, of the defect. Right. If it is an offense that they commit, we yeah. can give you a ticket. Okay. So we could warn you of internal prosecution and proceed by summons. Right. Okay, now I know you've had many many years of experience as a license officer and we are as we heard earlier we are seeing a lot of increase in road accidents and that kind of thing in Tobago. Is there anything you want to say to motorists, pedestrians, users of the roadway? in terms of your own take on what that situation is and how we can probably um, treat with improving that. We have to try, you know, the, the vehicle population in Tobago has grown and it's growing every day. Yeah. Because every day we license new vehicles here. And we have to, we as drivers, have to keep that to the front of our head and know that now it's not like in the long ago, in the 80s, you only had a few vehicles here. Right. Every time you drive down the road, and every time you look ahead, that vehicle is coming. So we have to keep that in there. And you have to tell yourself it makes no sense trying to overtake. Because once you overtake, a vehicle always coming. Yeah. You have to be in the speed of it and try to arrive alive. Okay. And avoid and drive defensive. Right. You have to be defensive. To give away sometimes. You do your right, have the right away. Mm -hmm. It is better to slow down and give up your rights. Right. And let the other people go see them and avoid an accident. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Patrick. It has been a pleasure chatting with you. Thank you. Kisha, mm. you know this girl coming here? What's up? I can't remember her name. But if you hear the kinds of things this girl is be saying about you. Serious? Like what? Girl, all kind of thing. Go study it. We go fix that. I hear you talking about what me. You hear me talking about huh? you? Don't worry, you have backup. You have backup here. You have backup here. Stop the violence and abuse. Stay calm. Start thinking. Good talk, yes. The Ministry of National Security Citizen Security Program. The decisions you make today influence your future. You determine where you want to be. Make the right choice. Stop. Stay calm. Start thinking. A message from the Ministry of National Security's Citizen Security Program. I'm Samantha John. I am Nadia Batson. The incredible Myron B. I'm K.I. Chucky Gordon. Hi, my name is Sheriff. And, and we, we are Freetown. 
and I'm urging each and every citizen of our beautiful country. It's time for us to put a stop to crime and violence in Trinidad and Tobago once and for all. In Freetown, we believe that every citizen has the right to life. We need to be responsible not only for ourselves but for others as well. I think the only way to counter any kind of fear is to inject love. We have the power to stand up, to unite, to stay positive and to win back our country. The la culture of lawfulness, peace, respect, love, harmony. The Citizen Security Program. Stop the violence and abuse. Stop the violence and abuse. Stay calm. Stay calm. Stay calm. Stay calm and start thinking. Start thinking. And start thinking. A message from the Citizen Security Program. Stop the violence and abuse. Stay calm and start thinking. Stop the violence and abuse. Stay calm. Start thinking. The Ministry of National Security Citizen Security Program. No, I'm not ready for that. Stop. Stay calm. Start thinking. Okay. Cool. A little. Cool. A message from the Ministry of National Security's Citizen Security Program. Remember, we don't want to know who you are. We just want your information. Crime Stoppers. It's safe and it works. Driving without due care and attention, according to Corporal Sebro of the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service Traffic Branch, is the leading cause of road traffic accidents in Tobago. So Tobago CSI spoke with Mr. Joseph Johnson of Johnson's Defensive Driving School, and he shared with us the difference between a good driver and a safe driver. What do you think about the situation that's happening now in Tobago? Well, what has happened in Tobago right now is that persons are taking advantage of this. A number of our young drivers, they need to be educated. I'll tell you what, from since 1966, when they have changed the standard of regulations, right. persons no more understand the value of the rule. Okay. So you're saying that there's, been, there's a change in people's behavior, behavior on the road, right? on the road yes. Could you give us a picture of what your thoughts are on how people are using the roadways now? If what they're doing wrong is that persons are using the road as though they're in the bushes. They are passing you on any side. Sometimes they pass, they're passing you on the left, they're passing you on the right, they're passing you around the corner, and they're just not some...